Beaufort County, South Carolina is one of the fastest growing, wealthiest counties in the Palmetto State. It's home to Hilton Head, the Heritage. It's one of the epicenters of South Carolina's tourism industry. Unfortunately, Beaufort County's government has not grown with it, at least not in terms of maturity. As I noted in a recent column, Beaufort is plagued by not only corruption, but governmental and political immaturity. And we've seen it in a number of different facets, but we're seeing a more sinister part of it in the last few weeks. We're here today with Lisa Lynch, who has helped uncover what I think is gonna be one of the biggest scandals to ever hit a local government in the Palmetto State. Lisa, you're the former wellness director of Beaufort County. I am. And you lost your job because you wouldn't marry the head of the county. Basically, that's it, right? Well, I think it's a little more complicated <laughs> than that, but uh, that was definitely um, certainly an issue. We're gonna dive into the story, but before we get into the specifics of what led us here today, I wanna to know a little bit about you, about your history. You've got tons of experience in healthcare, both nursing, administrative. Give us a little bit of your background. Um, sure. Uh, so I have been a nurse for 31 years. I have, I've done bedside nursing. I have done uh, administrative CEO type work. I've owned my own company, which was healthcare staffing. Uh, home health. I uh, was a vice president for a national company in the, in the Carolinas. Um, I've also worked with, in the infertility industry and in business development, PR marketing. Um, I've I've probably done a little bit of everything uh, in in the healthcare industry, and uh, I but I, I truly do love patient care. But it's been a long time since I've done like actual hands-on nursing. But you've got a ton of relationships too in the healthcare I, field. I do, I do. Perfect for this yep, job. I do. Um, and more recently, I did some. Uh, I've been doing a lot of IT work and have worked uh, with uh, a business associate, in particular, in the mental health space, on an uh, an app for mental health and opioid uh, addiction services. And uh, that was um, has become a, a passion for me. Well, it's hugely space. important now. Yeah, the it is. Fentanyl epidemic and everything we're seeing. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that opioid work. That's kind of how it all started with the county, but then you were <clears> extended <throat> this offer to become the wellness director, and that was at the, I guess, personal invitation of the county administrator, Eric Greenway. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And you two, uh, I guess, before the job offer, you guys were friends. You knew each other socially. Yes. Yes, we were. Tell us a little bit about how that relationship began, how it developed. Um, so I met I met Eric uh, in the fall um, of last year. Um, I can't tell you exactly when. Um, you know, you don't make mental notes of those things. You just I met him uh, at a friend's home. Um, was doing what I typically do with my, my girlfriends. Most of my friends live in, the, in my neighborhood. And we were sitting on a front porch of a friend, and like we do. Uh, one of my uh, very best friends is fighting breast cancer. And so we typically just kind of congregate on her porch. Um, Eric knows her husband and he just showed up, I guess, at uh, this other friend's invitation. And uh, we were sitting on the porch. And so that's how I met him. And he kind of hung around and uh, started coming around and hanging out with our group of friends. And I will say our group is very tight. We're kind of like a family. and. He started coming to dinners and social gatherings, and we pretty much do everything together. And we do consider ourselves family. We take big group vacations together. We go to dinners on weekends, and um, and we are a good support system for each other. So we. we what were your first out. impressions of the guy when you met him on the porch that night? Um, he seemed very likable. Yeah. Um, a little quiet, but uh, very seemed very kind. Um, 
he did mention that he didn't have a lot of uh, friends because he was the administrator. I didn't even know what that meant <laughs> <laughs> for Beaver County. Um, in fact, I'm going to say my sister remarked, we don't, what does that mean exactly? Um, we had no idea. And so he kind of had to explain. And I kind of felt, I felt bad for him because he acted like he didn't have friends and couldn't really make friends with employees. Um, and so, you know, he started hanging out with us and he was very likable, very likable. At what point did he make it clear to you that he wanted to move past a friendship into something romantic? Um, I mean, it was pretty casual, you know, at first. Um, he said, you know, do you want to have dinner sometime? And I said, well, sure. You know, I didn't, for me, dinner doesn't mean let's get married. Right. <laughs> or let's be in a relationship. Um, for me, dinner's like, hey, let's have dinner. We're both single people. Um, and I, I have been the, sing, the only single person in my group for a very long time. I've been single a very long time. So he asks you out to dinner. Mm -hmm. You're thinking this is just a chance to get to know this guy better. Yeah. What do you think's going through his mind based on kind of what you know now? <sighs> well, I'm guessing <laughs> it was very different than what I thought. Yeah. Um, definitely not w what I was thinking. You know, I I thought we would be friends, and he wanted more, obviously, and I definitely would say he was controlling and. It was definitely it definitely was not what I thought. Was it like a physical, like a sexual kind of push, or was it more like no, a... No, not at, not at all, and I need to make that very clear. Never like that. Um, you know, I just, I had to really push back because he was always just planning events or things and and I mean he would have planned my entire life out for me if I had let him and very quickly this is happening yeah so I kind of had to push back and say that's that's not happening and I'm not okay with that right you know so he's moving from zero to marriage yes like that yes yeah now look Obviously, while this is happening, there's the interplay of there's the personal relationship, but then obviously you're perfectly suited for this wellness job, perfectly mm -hmm. suited to help with this opioid struggle. So there's this professional relationship between the two of you that emerges too. Right. Right. How does that walk us through a little bit about how those kind of intertwined? Were they parallel? Did they? So he approached me first about working on, as a consultant, working on the opioid abatement project. And initially I said no. Um, I looked at the work that needed to be done um, and, really, and really looked hard at it. And I said no a few times. Um, and, there were, and there were a few reasons for it. Um, <clears throat> initially, I thought it, it had a lot of grant writing that needed to be done. Um, it was it was a lot of work, and I, I just thought, you know, I first of all, I, I don't like writing grants, so I'm just going to be real honest. Um, and I thought, you know, this is this is really going to need a, a lot of attention and a lot of dedication. I'm not sure that I'm up for it right now. And I said, you know, I really think uh, Angie might be interested in this, and Angie is my sister-in-law. Um, why don't you ask Angie? And he said, well, um, I mean, I'm sure she can do it, 
but I really prefer if, if she's going to do it that you need to do it with her because of your skill set and your background and I said well let her look at it and see what she thinks she might not even be interested so she looked at it and she said actually I really think I am interested in this um, what do you think and I said it's the grants that I'm concerned about um, you know I'm I'm concerned that we would have to do that and I called someone I knew that had the experience to do it but wasn't writing, doing grant writing anymore uh, for the same reasons I wasn't interested in doing it. And anyway, he came back and said, what if I just take all that out? And we'll, we'll, we'll not make you handle all that part of it. Um, so he, he kind of removed every barrier. <clears throat> and I thought, well, if you're going to do that. This might be, you know, a, a, something I would be interested in doing because the work itself would be very rewarding. Um, and, and I, you know, to be honest, I have some personal history uh, with a family member who I lost to a heroin overdose. And so it's, it's very near and dear to me. Uh, I, I can't tell you how devastating that was. And we have a problem here in South Carolina, a big problem. And to work on that was incredibly rewarding. And we really were starting to, to make an impact and we were getting ready to launch things that were going to make such a difference in Beaufort County. Um, so anyway, it, it was something we felt we could really take on and a challenge and, and make a difference. We wouldn't have done it otherwise. The work was going well, and in the wellness position, you yeah. were thriving. Yeah. So that came after, um, and you know, I had um, so in, in full transparency, I said to Eric, um, "Is there is there any way that a consultant can get insurance through the county and health insurance?" He said, "No, it doesn't work that way." And I said, okay. He said, why don't you just come work for me because I'm going to be hiring um, a position that you'd be great for, well suited for. And I, th I think this is how this conversation went. I might be paraphrasing a little bit. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't know about that. And he, he kept bugging me. To take the job. To, well, to or talk to, apply to him. For it. To talk yeah. to him. He, in fact, I don't even think he mentioned what the job was. And he said, you know, come talk to me about this job. And I was like, I, you know, I just, I don't know that I want to do it. I'm interested, just, just talk to me. So I finally agreed to talk to him. And honestly, I don't even remember when it was. It might have been January, it might have been February. I don't even remember, but I did agree to talk to him, and he said, here's the job, what do you think? And I thought, well, this is, this is intriguing. He said, I, I think you'd be great at it, and I really think you should, I think you should do this. I said, well, you know, the, the problem is I would need you know, some accommodations. I would need to work from home. I need some flexible scheduling. Done. All right, now what? <laughs> so every barrier to taking the position he removed. And so I thought, well, okay, <laughs> you're making this way too easy for me. So why would I not do this? Mm -hmm. You know, I love being a nurse. Mm -hmm. I love helping people. Um, the challenge was there. It had never there were, was no wellness director before me. Um, <clears throat> building a health center, two health centers, uh, was part of the position. Um, I had built um, an internal medicine practice previously. I thought, you know, I can do this. This will be a lot of fun. Uh, helping the employees of Beaufort County with you know, their wellness 
initiatives and helping them to get better physically, mentally. I thought this is this will be awesome. I love doing this. And yeah, I think I, I think I should do this. So, you know, it was the end of April when I started. Um, and at this point, on the personal side, mm -hmm. there had been some clarity, or at least you thought there was some clarity in the relationship where. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought we had some clarity. I mean, I knew how uh, Eric clearly felt. Uh, I did make it clear to him that we could not be in a relationship, uh, a personal relationship, other than as friends. Um, and I made that crystal clear to him. And, and he seemed okay with that. So you're in a job that he's removed all barriers. Yep. A contract that he removed barriers. Yes, and it was in my contract, by the way. And and at this point, because you know the perception on there, people think, oh well, what did she do to get the job, or oh she was pushing for the job, but none of that was happening. This was no. You were actually, you know, mm. expressing some conditions or reservations, or not reservations yeah. about the work, but no. I in fact, I had a I had a lot of hesitation about it because I knew how he felt. Mm -hmm. In fact, two days before, one or two days before um, he even presented me the contract, I told him that we needed to talk because um, I found out that he was putting two layers of supervisors between he and I. And I, I knew Eric enough to know that he was thinking he would do that so that maybe he could date me. And I texted him, I said, talk, meaning we need to talk. Yeah. And he called me and he said, oh, I knew this was coming. And I said, yes, I'm not gonna take the job. And he said, wait, 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 wait. Let me fix this. And I said, Eric, I'm telling you, you I don't know what you're doing, but this is not gonna work. I'm not gonna take the job. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go work in HR because you think you're going to circumvent a system and try to date me. I've told you this is not going to happen. And this is two days before you? One or two days yeah. before. Yeah. I don't remember exactly, but yes. He's like, just let me, let me fix this. And I said, well, I understand. I am not kidding. So I heard from him and he said, all right, I've got your contract. You ready to look at it? And I said, fine. And the contract was exactly how I expected it to be at that time with special accommodations for remote working from home, um, exactly what I expected. I would be reporting directly to him. And you know, he said, it's exactly how we discussed, and there will be no problems. And I reiterated to him before I signed it in front of him, you understand, I am dating someone, and you're okay with that. Yes. And you told him you were dating someone else? Yes. Oh, I wow. said, you understand, I am seeing someone else. We're clear. Yes, I understand. I'm dating someone else too. I said, wonderful, then there's no problem. Wow, okay. No, we're good. But it didn't take long for there to be a problem, did it? It took exactly two weeks. Walk us through what happened the night of May 6th <clears throat> this year. Um, so, I, I, sh I should probably back up a little to Saturday during the day. Um, I texted him that Saturday to actually let him know that I was bringing a date to a mutual friend's, uh, just, just a dinner party. Nothing, wasn't anything special, just a, a dinner party. And I felt the need to do that because he had been acting 
a little strange for the two weeks leading up to that party. How strange how? You know, a couple of times he just sh would show up at my house during the workday, which really bothered me. Um, unannounced. And I had made my mind up that I was going to have a conversation with him and say, you can't do this. You can't just show up at my house. You know, I'm working. You're my boss. Not okay. Um, another incident at the office. Um, I was in the executive conference room. I had to bring my laptop in. I had an issue with it. And one of the IT guys was working with me to try to fix my laptop. And he walked in and said, um, you two need to come in my office and work in, at my conference room. And I thought, okay, that is really weird. And he made us get up, leave the conference room and go in his office and sit at his conference room table in his office so he could oversee us working. There was no reason for it. And I was waiting to see what, you know, was there a reason? There was no reason. It was so uncomfortable. You'd mentioned earlier that the overtures from, from him to you, they weren't necessarily the, the physical sexual overtures. No, but, no, never. But con seems like controlling type It was behavior. very controlling. Possessive. Controlling, possessive, sort of a power thing. And I, honestly, that two weeks was just so strange. I was, I don't, I don't know that I have the right word, but I was going to have to address it. But things blew up first. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Talk us. Talk so, to us about when that switch flipped. Well, the text didn't go over well because I texted him to say, I am bringing a date. I just want to let you know because I knew I needed to probably let him know because he'd been acting strange. Uh, the text I got back was not good. Um, wow, I can't believe you didn't pick up the phone and call me. And I thought, I don't even owe you this. So then I picked the phone up and called him, and it was a long phone call, and he was just odd, very odd, and very upset. Hmm. And I said, you don't have the right to be upset. I tried to give him a little bit of uh, grace because um, it had been a tough morning. We had an inmate that day at the detention center had hung themselves. Mm -hmm. And so honestly, I did try to give him some grace because it was a, it was a tough morning. So I, I basically just finally got off the phone and I was like, you know what? I've, I have done all I can do here. I am just going to go enjoy my evening. Well, uh, I showed up first and you know, there were other folks there as well. And uh, he showed up by himself. And he was just angry. And the best way I can describe it is he was just unhinged. Red in the face, angry, pacing, slamming things. In front of these? In front of everybody. Mm hmm yeah. Let's assume that the story ended there or ended with him swallowing his pride, <clears throat> yeah. keeping his distance, respecting your, I guess it wasn't even a relationship. It was a guy, second date, I think you'd said. Yeah, it was a second <laughs> date, which was so embarrassing. But let's just assume that that's how it had ended, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be sitting here. We would not be sitting here, no. Because it, it, it took a dark turn at that point, didn't it? Tell us a little bit about 
that evening, that very evening, you started to see the beginnings of this retaliatory campaign against you. Yes, he uh, he first approached um, Angie, my sister-in-law, and said, you're going to need to get your calendar out right now. Um, we're going to have to talk about your your contract. And she said, Eric, I have my work phone calendar. And then he came to me and approached me and said the same thing. And I said, what is your problem? And I just, I tried to stay away from him. <clears throat> and then we both received, um, well, I received the text message. I don't know, she didn't, she didn't get a text message. I got the text message that was threatening. Yeah. Me, my family, my colleagues, uh, the one that's been printed um, in the paper and on your site, um, you know, telling me that I would regret, or I don't remember the exact language now. I should have it probably burned in oh, my it's memory. It's a clear threat. Yeah, clear threat. Um, and then within a brief period of time, the emails started going out to my colleagues, professional colleagues, um, severing relationships with uh, the county that had been built um, for media campaigns, for um, an app that we were building for opioid use, um, just yeah, it was all the people he named in the text that would regret it. He uh, started correct making them regret it. Yes, immediately. So, yes, it was immediate and it was swift. Um, and then texting with the folks that uh, we were at their home, um, who were trying to kind of calm him down, and yeah. just was he drunk? Was he? I, I mean, I didn't feel like he was. I mean, he had had a couple of glasses of wine that I noticed, but who knows? I, I don't think so. Just angry. Very angry that um, I would be so disrespectful. I believe that was the term that was used in the text message to my friend. Um, either be my friend or don't. And I thought, okay, I, I, I cannot believe this is happening. I felt like I wasn't, like I was on a, another planet. I, I could not believe it was happening. And it was just the start, wasn't it? Oh, it was just the start. I thought surely Sunday he would walk all of it back. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. I was out of my mind. I, I was just. Had a few too many drinks. I, I thought, surely I'll get a phone call. Uh, this will. This is just. He had a. He was, he was acting out of character. He was or something. I, I just thought, surely this is. Gonna end the next day. It did not. He texted all the guys in our group and said, "Do you want to go play golf?" No text to me, no text to my sister-in-law, Angie. No, I'm sorry. That was the worst thing I've ever, I mean, I'm so, nothing. In fact, he started pulling people into the campaign of retaliation, of harassment. There were others that were doing his dirty work, so to speak. Well, um, that Monday, um, I immediately realized that I was going to have a problem. So I obviously needed to find help and I had to go find myself um, representation. And I did. And uh, Tim Lewis, who represents me now, reached out to the county and said, listen, <laughs> there's a problem here. And uh, of course, you know, things haven't gone so well for me since then. Yeah, let's just so we can paint this picture for folks that are tuning into this for the first time. He wasn't initially fired. 
He was sus oh, no. suspended with pay. Th that wasn't even initial. Um, yeah. He was he was in his job for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, they offered to just put me under a different supervisor, um, assistant county administrator. Um, <clears throat> I was put under Whitney Richland, um, and to be clear, I actually asked to be put under her, which was the worst mistake I have ever made. And he basically was just removed from having any responsibility for the wellness department, my, my department. Um, and he was left in his role. Um, they didn't feel like he had done anything wrong. And they, I formally made a complaint um, and I believe that was May 16th when I actually filed the formal complaint, which went to HR and uh, Councilman Passamet. Mm -hmm. Is when the formal written complaint went in. He's a top ally of Eric Greenway. He's the guy that it's my understanding. put him in that, yeah. His top defender on council. That's my understanding. So that's, that's but that's the process. So I did what I was required to do, and I thought for sure at that point um, everything was in black and white. It wasn't my word against his word. It was all in writing, um, surely there would be some action taken. Um, and I wasn't asking for, you know, I was asking for some pretty simple things. Um, and there was no action taken, other than me being put under a different supervisor. Who ended up being every bit as aggressive in the retaliation. Uh, awful. Walk us through some of this. This is obviously someone, Whitney Richland, she's the <coughs> uh, deputy administrator. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, she is one of the ones who is at the focus of the current criminal investigation into all this, owing to some questionable contracts that were approved uh, actually, they tried to run it through your department at one point, didn't they? Um, so, we can certainly talk about that. Um, <laughs> well, keep, stick it to what you, okay. yeah, uh, what you so had to do. Do you with. want me to talk about that now? Okay. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> well, this was all prior to my employment as the wellness director. And I never had any conversations with Whitney about it, so I want to be clear about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I can't tell you exactly when this was, but Eric had approached me um, and, and not Angie about purchasing some weighted blankets mm -hmm. through the company Elemental and that we would be purchasing them uh, from, I guess, Whitney's company, and that we would be buying them, and then the county would, would buy them back. <clears throat> and I just, I was like, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little confused. And he's like, well, you know, like for use with addiction, and, and I was like, I just kind of shook my head like this. It's not just a few yeah. blankets though, right? Well, I never <laughs> asked about quantity or, it was a very brief conversation. And I said to myself, that's not happening. Didn't mention it to Angie because it's like, we're not doing this. Mm. This is not happening. And any other time it came up, I avoided the conversation. We were not doing that. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely not going to happen. And how I found out that it actually occurred was on your website, your, your article that you did. We literally had the so, receipts. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea that it actually had happened. $36,000 yeah, for I, weighted blankets, yeah. yeah. And I didn't know that it was the quantity or the amount. I didn't know any of that. I didn't know it had occurred. Um, I was never brought into that. And 
the date of that invoice was prior to mm. my start date and I was kind of shocked that it had the wellness department on there and Eric's name. So I, I can assure you I never saw the blankets. Right. And I didn't know it it had actually taken place. So And this is just one of dozens of questionable expenses that we've we've been made aware of. Land deals, some potentially involving members of the council down here, all of this currently under investigation by the South Carolina First Circuit solicitor in the State Law Enforcement Division, all of it because you came forward. So, is it okay if I talk about that for a second? Please. Um, and, and the last thing I'll say about the blankets, um, the comment that was made to me was, I have to do this for Whitney. This is something I have to do for Whitney. He said that directly to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And I never asked why, or I was just like, I, I had no idea why. I don't know. And I didn't dive into it. Um, you know, we had so many conversations about so many different things that I don't, I have, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know anything more than that. Mm -hmm. And again, I didn't know it had taken place. On the, the criminal investigation, I didn't know there were criminal things going on. I don't know why um, I am important to this criminal investigation, except for some of the things that I've recently been made aware of. Um, I initially, at the urging of my attorney and his partners, when I hired them, was asked by them to go to the sheriff's department and just make them aware of what was going on in my life because they had some safety concerns for me. And in doing so, I guess because I allowed them to read my complaint, it triggered some kind of concern for them that there could be some criminal behavior, maybe, we'll say. Um, it, something made them aware that they should be looking some, for something. They saw something in what you filed. But I didn't actually file anything. Mm. They asked me to initially, and I didn't want to do that. I said, "Look, I don't, I don't want to do that. I didn't want my name on an, an incident report." And I was like, "Explain what that means to me." And it it took weeks, maybe a month. I don't know how much later. They called my attorney and said, "Look, we have been doing some investigation." we need you to bring your client in. And Tim called me and said, the sheriff's department needs you to come in. And I went and they just said, look, we can't ignore criminal activity. And we just need to know, will you be cooperative? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you asking me to cooperate in? And they said, well, there are things going on, or we believe there are, and you are the only person who may have knowledge. And if that's the case, and we ask you questions on the stand, are you going to tell the truth? And I said, well, of course I'm going to tell the truth. Well, that's what we need to know. And in saying yes, that started an investigation of formally because I agreed to tell the truth and because of that being agreeing to tell the truth which my moral compass wouldn't let me do anything else I'm not gonna lie or sit up there and say I don't remember 
um, and becoming part of a criminal investigation, uh, I guess they figured out it was me that I agreed to tell the truth about what was going on, whatever knowledge it is that I have, which I think is fairly limited, but I don't know. <clears throat> I then became, I guess, a target, and I put a target on my back. In addition to the fact that I had already filed the harassment complaint, so I guess they really didn't have much choice but to try to get rid of me. <laughs> I was about to say. So three strikes, they're going to force you out at that point. Mm -hmm. Or at least that's my take on it. Hmm. Um, and they certainly weren't letting me try to do my job the way that it that it needed to be done. I mean, they were making it impossible to meet this, the standard, you know. The, bar, the bars set here, I would meet, meet the standard, then they would raise it and raise it and raise it. And I would meet the standard every time they would raise the bar. Mm -hmm. If that meant working 15 hours a day, that's what I did. And they just couldn't, they couldn't get me. There was nothing to get me on, so they just outfired me. And all the while, while this is going on, you know, we read newspaper articles about, oh, Greenway's being treated unfairly because no one's talking about these allegations. But when you came forward and told your story for the first time, within 48 hours, he was gone. But I don't think it was because of me. No. It wasn't. I don't know why he was fired, because they're not saying. Hmm because there's no transparency. I don't know why. Um, or at least they haven't told me, but again, not a single council member has reached out to me to talk to me, which is why I addressed them Monday night at the council meeting and took my three minutes. No one has asked to speak to me. Um, I don't know why. I would hope they would want to hear my side but they don't. I'm glad you brought that up. There's an excerpt from that address that you gave, just an incredibly powerful bit of testimony that you gave to the council members, the, one who, the ones who literally could have reinstated you right there. But I wanted to cut to this because you said okay. something about this, about what, what's happening to you is not happening in a vacuum. And I wanted to cut to that, let's cut to that real quick. Your address to the county council just this past Monday. My name is Lisa Lynch. I am the former director of wellness for Beaufort County and a registered nurse. On May 16th, I filed a complaint with the county against Mr. Eric Greenway under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 on the grounds of sexual harassment because I am a woman. It is important that you all know what happened to me and take action to prevent it from ever happening again. You should also know that I am not the only one there are currently two other women with complaints against the county, and other women have reached out to me since I went public. I have been subjected to retaliation, and I have been terminated, which is illegal under Title VII. My life has been destroyed, and I have chosen not to remain silent. I loved my job, and I wanted to keep my job as the wellness director. As recent as 10 days ago, I asked to be reinstated to my job. This complaint has never been about money. As for my competence to do the job, I have 31 years experience as a nurse. I have owned my own healthcare staffing company, employing hundreds of employees. I have been the vice president of a national home care company, and I sat on its board of directors. I worked as a director of nursing for two major facilities. I won Businesswoman of the Year for the York County Chamber of Commerce. I am well qualified. My firing was unjustified. More than my firing was the reprehensible treatment I had to endure for three months leading up to my firing at the hands of those in charge. They tried their best to make me quit. However, I stood firm and took their abuse. They had to resort to firing me just one day after Mr. Greenway was put on paid administrative leave. Coincidence? I think not. 
I urge you as you go into this executive session to keep transparency in mind. Mr. Greenway should have a public hearing. If you are considering ways to make that a closed session, I ask you not to. I also ask you to consider my complaint and the bad actors that have had control over my future. If this had happened to your wife, your daughter, your sister, your mother, how would you feel? You should also know this, I will not go away. I will not remain silent and I will not shrink away because powerful men are in the room and women who enable them. I do this for myself and for all women who are too afraid to come forward and they have no voice. The systemic pervasive mistreatment of women at this county has to stop now. Thank you. Pervasive, systemic mm -hmm. mistreatment of women. Yes. Tell us what you mean by that. Well, I am definitely not the only person, the only woman. Um, if you look at the fact that there are two others right now with um, ongoing claims against the county and the way the former administrator was treated, I have also had other women reach out to me who are not going to come forward. One in particular that bothered me, I, I, I was in tears and she's a single mother that can't afford to come forward. Um, it, was, um, it was very emotional and I can't, I, I, I'm still having a hard time believing her story. And she's very articulate, very educated. I, I can't not speak out. There are women who do not have a voice. This cannot continue. You know, I thought, I'm in my 50s. I thought when I was in my 30s, and even in my 40s, that this would end. You know, we're in 2023 and we're still dealing with this. I mean, this has got to stop. This has got to stop. And like you told those council members, what if it were their daughter, their wife, their sister, their mom, and you put it right back on them? It, it, it just, it's not okay anymore. It is not okay. There is no, there's no world in which this is okay where women are treated as second class citizens. There is no quid pro quo here where I give you a job and you have to marry me. No, it doesn't work that way, Eric. No. And then I'm fired? No, and he gets to retire and take his money with him? I'm sorry, it should not be okay. I've lost a lot here. And Whitney Richland gets to terrorize me for months? Uh-uh, no, I'm not going away. I am gonna speak for myself and for all women who have not been able to speak out. And trying to work there and be quiet, that was horrible. And it's hard for me to think back that there were women who were doing the bidding for these men. That's even worse, I think, for me. Neighbors. Yeah, completely. And there were others, but she was the worst. Yeah. Again, she, as we've been informed, one of the focuses of this ongoing inquiry 
Uh, obviously, her desk has been cleaned out at the county. We're not entirely sure what the status is, but certainly got better treatment than was meted out to you. Lisa, let me ask you this. Yeah. As you look back on this year that started with such yeah. hope, promise, yeah. doing good for this community and what it's turned into, let me ask you this. Where does it go from here for you personally, and where do you think... <clears throat> this investigation, whether it's the county, whether it's the, the law enforcement inquiry, mm -hmm. what needs to happen in Beaufort County so that people can once again have faith in this government? Wow. Oh, gosh, I wish I knew. Um, well, obviously, you know, SLED is in. They're doing an investigation. Um, I'm sure that they will do a thorough investigation and find out exactly what is happening. And the bad actors will be gone. I hope that the citizens of Beaufort County will get involved in the political process and vote the, the way that they need to vote so that we get people in positions that on the council that will be involved and be transparent because there's not enough transparency the way things are right now. But at the county, again, same thing. There's no transparency. And, I, you know, I'd never worked in an environment like this before. And I, I'm super frustrated with with how things were run, and, and and I didn't know a lot of things going into it. Maybe I was a little naive, but it there just there needs to be changes. But how how it should look, it just not like it is for sure. Definitely not how it is. When we spoke earlier about doing this, yeah, I know we we never twist your arm too hard, but we did, you know. And one of the things we talked about was your example going out to women in other governments, municipal, state government, other county governments oh, yeah. who were dealing with the same thing. What would your advice be to a woman who is dealing with those unwanted advances, whether they're sexual or this kind of possessive behavior from a superior, from someone with power over them? What, what's your advice to to those women? You know, this is a really hard question because I really understand the women that don't speak up. This is hard. You know, this is not easy to put yourself out here up for public scrutiny and I know there are going to be people who will say, uh, you know, she, she asked for that or, um, you know, I'm, I'm laying my life out here for people to pick apart. So for me to say, you know, don't take it, you know, hit back, um, that is not easy advice to give. Some of these women who have reached out to me, I get why they didn't. And they just went away quietly, got fired, can't get a different job in their field. Can't, they went away quietly, and I know why they did it. So I can't say, you know, fight back when there's so much to lose. Look what I've lost. I've lost my income, professional credibility. It's, it's a hard road. So while you'd like to think that standing up and doing the right thing by... Um, Leading the charge is easy, it's not. So if you decide you go that route, what I can tell you is how important it is that you have a support system, <laughs> that you document everything you, that you can, and you know, you've got you know, great people with you, and it's, just know that you, you, you've got to be strong 
because this is a hard fight. I mean, it's one I'm prepared to do or I wouldn't be here right now with you. Um, but it is not for the faint of heart. Lisa, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this story. We hope you'll keep sharing it, not just with us, but any media outlet that asks you, we hope you share it far, share it wide. And we hope that all the women out there that are dealing with this hear it. Because you're right, it's got to stop. Yeah. Thank you, I, Lisa. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely.